This is one of the best Rolex Explorer alternatives I've ever worn. And you know what? It's not an homage. It's actually an original. And when I say original, Nevada Grinchen was founded in 1926. It's a company that's now been brought back to life in 2018. And back in the 50s, Nevada was making field watches that looked like Rolex. Rolex was making field watches that looked like a Nevada. Seiko was making field watches that looked like the rest of them. And it's such a pleasure to see this brand being revived in 2018 and listen to the people and bring back some of their iconic watches. And that's what I've got here. And on first impressions, you're probably thinking, hang on, what's the story with the dial? It looks like a tropic dial. It is. And just recently I was surfing Chrono 24 for a birth year watch. And I found this Rolex Explorer 1 with a tropic dial. And, <laughs> and unfortunately it was just slightly out of my price range. But the look was incredible. And what Nevada have done here, they've basically made a tropical dial. It's not just a colored dial. It's not painted per se. Nevada have put this particular dial through a complex combination of aging chemicals. It's a reaction to corrode and shift the color tone and the texture and what we see here is quite unique because the process that they're using, it basically speeds up the natural tropical effect that we'd see over time, but just much, much faster. And in doing so, every one of these watches pretty much is gonna have a unique character. Now being able to replicate that in a modern way, in a reissue, see, this watch is called the Aquamatic, the Super Antarctic 369, and it's basically commemorating the trip to Antarctica back in the 1950s from the US Navy. It was from an expedition called Operation Deep Freeze. Look it up on the internet, you'll be quite impressed. Now before I continue, you saw the pop-up, this watch has been sent out to the channel without the need for it to be sent back. However, as with any company that sends any product into this channel, they have zero input into the review content. I'm gonna tell you what I think, good, bad, or indifferent, and I gotta be honest, this is the sort of watch that's very difficult to review because it is so nicely made, so beautiful to look at, that it's extremely difficult to remain objective and tell you my feelings in a neutral way. Not many people know about Nevada. It's one of those quiet heroes of old that was walking side by side with Rolex and with Seiko at the same time. Now, when I first received this watch and I opened the box and I had a look at it, my first impressions were, oh yeah, nice. It's a casual watch experience, not too bad. And then I stepped outside and looked at this watch in direct sunlight. And the word casual quickly disappeared from my vocabulary. It was replaced with the word spectacular. The combination of this dial and sapphire crystal and the layout, it's absolutely a delight on the eyes. It's really well executed in the looks and finishing department. So when placing this watch in direct sunlight, I completely understand what they've done with this dial. They've nailed it. That superb casual personality quickly transformed into a beautiful visual experience. And therein lies the problem. You see, I've been wearing this for the better part of a week and for an Explorer style watch, for a field watch, when you go exploring or sightseeing and adventuring, as soon as the sun comes out, no matter where you are, whatever location in the world, as soon as the sun comes out and you look down at this dial, you quickly find yourself looking at the watch and the eye candy as compared to the landscape around you. Because this particular doll is oozing personality. I love it. And I'm sorry I have to say that. That's why I'm struggling to review this watch. It ticks so many boxes. In the area of balance, tick. Symmetry, tick. No date, tick. It's legible, tick. It's easy on the eyes, it's easy on the wrist, tick, tick. It's basically a beautiful piece that brings so much joy and contentment to the senses. I can tell you that much for certain. Now, is it a perfect watch? Absolutely not. No way, it's far from it. But the extreme gratification on the wrist brings so much shame to much higher priced major brands, which I can think of. And when a watch can do that, you know that they've done something right. And when I say higher priced, this thing comes in around $750. On the bracelet, around $950. Now let's dive straight into the specs and I'll tell you the dimensions. And looking closely at those specs, 38 mil diameter with an 11.6 mil height, just under 45 mil lug to lug, wonderful wearing experience. The crown is true to form vintage at 5.3 millimeters. It's a signed screw down crown. The watch offers 100 meters of water resistance and the total weight on this beads of rice bracelet, I measure exactly 122 grams, size to my 18 centimeter wrist. So for a field watch, this is sitting beautifully on my wrist. At 38 mil with an 11.6 height, wonderful the comfort on that bracelet has been really exceptional 
I think they've done this in such a way to be usable, practical and fun, but overall a real delight and a unique character on the wrist. Now getting up close and personal with that dial, it's actually a matte dial but with a tropical colour. So they're using a weak oxidising agent and UV light to basically cook the dial and the loom to turn it into that vintage effect. Now speaking of the finishing, as soon as I put the dial under the macro lens, the first thing that I noticed was some residue on the handset, the markers, and I thought, oh no, what's happened here? The residue that you see on the handset and markers was an initial concern for me. But after spending some time with this watch on the wrist, I get it. A proper vintage tropical dial from an aged watch will not be pristine. It won't have pristine hands and markers. There's going to be imperfections, oxidizing spots, aging marks everywhere all over a watch like that. And that's what this has got. And it's unique. Now, will it continue to oxidize as time goes by? Not sure. Potentially, yes. But what better way to pay tribute than to actually leave the residue and signs of oxidation present in these watches? And for me, every watch is going to look unique and different in character. Love it. Really well done. But I didn't just leave it there. I actually contacted Nevada and I, I said to them, there's marks, there's residue. Is that normal? And I said, absolutely. It's intentional. And according to their literature, it even says, and it's for more authenticity. It's a sped up process of aging a dial. Now, I didn't think I was going to like this watch that much. I love this watch. It's been really difficult to get this off the wrist. And I think part of that liking this watch has got to do with the colour. The colour that I get off this dial in different lighting scenarios. You've got gold, you've got honey, you've got just enough warmth to make it visually stimulating. In fact, initially when I first opened the box, I thought this was a gilt dial. I thought the handset and markers were a gold tone in colour, but they're not. It's the reflection of the dial and the loom giving that impression that the markers and handset are subtle gilt. And when you get close up and you look at it in direct sunlight, you can see that you've got silver handset, silver markers, just enough warmth to make this work really well. That's a small, beautiful detail that I'd expect from a much higher priced watch. Looking at the loom of this watch, you've got Super Luminova 7403C. Considering the fact that it's got an aging effect on it, it glows green, just like back in the day, and it's actually quite good. For a field watch, offering 100 meters of water resistance, no qualms, no issues there. The layout of the doll is very balanced, very clean and classic, top marks. Personally, I think they did things right back in the 60s in regards to the designs. And here, bringing something back like this, they've nailed it. A lot of companies back then were borrowing designs and parts and layouts from each other, from Rolex, Seiko, Nevada. It's just how things were done back then. Now, enough time spent on the front of this watch. If I turn it over and look at that case back, you got a fantastic gold embossed emblem. Very, very reminiscent of a King Seiko of the period. It features the Antarctic trip, a nod back to history, a real nice touch, and so impressed that they did this. And behind that case back, you got a Soprod P024 automatic movement. Not dissimilar from an ETA 2824 2, automatic, 28,800 vibrations per hour, no date version, 38 hours power reserve, tried and tested designs. Lastly, if I turn my attention to that beads of rice bracelet, as you can see, the articulation is wonderful. It actually sits on the wrist really nicely. The main issue I find, you got male end links, so that does extend the lug to lug from 44.9 all the way up to 51 mil. And that can be a bit of a turn off for smaller wrists. But in saying that, this watch looks phenomenal on different types of straps. But looking closely back at that bracelet, you've got screw pins, you've got a press swivel in a matted sheen finish, a milled clasp, nice snap with four micro adjustments. It harkens back to the vintage era. Would have been nice to see it on the fly, but I think in keeping with the original design with something more true to form. Is it comfortable? Absolutely. Is it the best quality you can get? Well, it's finished nicely, but there's always room for improvement. Now I did say at the start that I really like the watch, but I'm gonna be objective to it. What are the pluses? What are the minuses? Well. That crown, for me, it's very small. Coming in only at 5.3 mil, also being a mushroom style, it's really hard to grab. But in saying that the watch has been running extremely accurate, in the week of wearing this, it's gained about four seconds. So I've really not had to touch that crown all week. The fact that it's got no date, even better. Second negative is those male end links. They do extend that lug to lug a little bit too much. For me, it's fine having an 18 centimeter wrist, but I can see the difficulty in smaller wrists. The only other option, get this watch on a leather strap. They do offer different types of straps, different colorways. 
Another negative, as I mentioned, is that swivel. Some might find that it's a little bit cheap. It is extremely comfortable. I can see what they've done. I understand what they've done. They've tried to make it more vintage appeal. I don't have a problem with it, but I'm pointing it out there for you guys. And probably the last negative, the loom is good. It's not exceptional. I think because it is aged, it is not as strong as it should be. It would have been good to have in the hand a standardized one from Nevada with Super Luminova just to see the difference. But in saying that, it's great for a field watch, no problems whatsoever. And moving on to the positives of this watch, well, it's wearable, it's legible, it's enjoyable. In fact, everybody that's seen this on my wrist from watch people and non-watch people have had so many positive comments. They think, wow, that is nice. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's lovely. The Aquamatic Super Antarctic was made in the 50s. The original I know was around 35 mil. This one is a modern 38 mil variant. I'm glad it's 38 because there's so many people, that's around the sweet spot. And first time hands on with this Tropic style dial, I'm really impressed. It's paying a march to Tropic dials. And like I saw that Rolex Explorer on Chrono 24, great looking watch, a little bit pricey. When companies like Nevada were in the same period running side by side with Explorer watches like Rolex and they were producing their own and now that they've been revived and bringing back their older models for us to enjoy today, that's a massive, massive plus. These are an absolute bargain guys. At 750 bucks, Swiss movement, the finishing is fantastic. The put everything aside, the enjoyment factor that I've had on this has been second to none. It's that good. And being on the phone with one of my viewers a few days ago, he said to me that he's got expensive watches, but he's also got an extremely, extremely inexpensive watch that he's ashamed to say that he finds joy in it. And I said, mate, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much a watch costs. At the end of the day, if it's making you, if it's ticking these emotional boxes inside the heart, if it's bonding with you and it's giving you joy more than your Omega, more than your Rolex, more than your Tudor, more than much higher priced watches, then the brand is doing well. And this is such a company. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I tried to be as neutral as possible. I do love this watch. It's the second watch I've had from Nevada on the channel. These watches are just a delight on the wrist and I can't speak highly enough of them, especially at that price point. Thank you for watching. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about this brand or even this watch itself. For me, it's been nothing but joy and I can easily see myself wearing this watch for the rest of the year without even touching my own personal collection. That's impressive. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.